coming soon. Okay, stop on this is going to be 7310, and I don't have the entry yet. Let's just watch it, but that's going to be the stop. Target 71. Let's do 19 by 10. 19 by 10 target. Here, do it. Do it. Get in it. It's going to go. 7310, and we have the stop plenty away. It's going to hold us in it. It's going to hold us in it even if it backs up. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But that's going to hold us in. In fact, let's put it at 15. 7315. It's figuring a buck. All right. Just be in that if you want to get something here today to the downside. Market looks amazing. Wow, you guys did the market. Good job. What what a night here. You can go long to spy. Man, you can go long to spy right here and put the stop under the low of the day. You can put the stop at 271.90 and that will hold all day. That's a buck. That's a buck and that has actually I really like target now. The the um the spy has a massive target. This is a jumongous target this week. I don't know if it's today. I don't know if it's tomorrow. I don't know if it's Wednesday, whatever. No, that would be tomorrow. <laughs> Thursday. I don't even know. Look at this one. Did anybody do Amazon? Called that this morning for the options letter. All right, let's go back to this. Here we go. Da, 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 da. 71, 75, 71 here through the low. Whoop. Here, did anybody do it? Koala Bear did it. Javad's is in Amazon. Good, you're up. Here, target through 72. And this is just so late. Whatever we get in this is just greenness. And if you did the cues, you're up from Gyro's call. Good job. Galahad, you did Amazon? I'm shocked. You... Complained about the price in the Netflix and Amazon was way more expensive, but still relatively cheap. Here, we didn't break through 72 yet, though. We do have to do that, which I think that we do any second. Here, Target. I didn't even have time to do anything this morning, so I didn't really even look. This was not gapping. Here, let's take a look at it. Here, here, do, 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 do. here, let it drop. Um, this was crazy town. Look, it was down, then it was up, then it was down. 9.15-ish. It was around 74.16. Here we go. Here. Here, target. Here! I'm just going to see if I can get one more push on this. I'm just going to get out of it because this is really late for me. Here. Here. Let's see if we can get a break of 80. I'm just going to take it. Here. Yes. Target. And I love Target too. Here. I took it. I'm out. Just one quick trade for me. If you want to stay longer, 71 looks great. Really didn't even think I'd get anything today because it was, again, it was on talking about other stuff for TV. But great. Nice trade. And if you want to keep the stop where it is and hold it, I really think it goes down there. And it gave you a really wide stop. Oh, this is all working out lovely. All right. Let's look at the market. And this looks good. And Netflix, I'm sure no one's still in this trade, but it's fabulous and went to 320. Um, what happened with the other ones? There was something else today. Apple gapped up, I think, too. No, nothing there. Google, nope, nothing here yet. This is the least of the interesting ones. All right, here, there. I just decided to take it because it was a quick, quick trade. But if you want to be in it all the way down to 71, I like it. So tell me what you did. Where did you go along the queues? Did you get stopped in this and were aggressive or you waited a little bit here? Tell me what you did. Hello? Here, I'm gonna let Gyro get on. Tell me what you did. 
Gyron, tell me what you did. Okay, it was a weird morning, basically. Um, when we looked at gaps, uh, there wasn't any. There weren't any great earnings gaps. Uh, once Target went back up and was no longer gapping, I missed the actual move when when Target came back below the low. So what we were looking at. Let me turn on this magic camera here. So we were actually watching without great, you know, without being aggressive, we were watching GLYC, basically. Um, it rated, I gave a, a generous, generously I gave it 20 points, but uh, this didn't look like it was gonna be fun. We were also watching this FRPT, but that was spready and it was gonna be ugly. And it was clearly a bust from the beginning. Um, so GLYC, it paused, it held, it, but it, we didn't, we didn't go after it. Uh, so we sat around and we looked and I was watching the cues. I thought the cues were stronger than the spy mm -hmm. based on, uh, it's already visited its high. And if it gets up there again, it's going to be that third trip up there where it's the spy. I saw it as a different story. We haven't been up, revisited the high yet. So, um, basically we were looking right in here at about 168.50 as it went above 168.50. Uh, and went from there. So that was the call. You know, I, I, I looked at long earnings gaps also was not inspired. Um, and of course earnings is slowing down for the whole season. So, you know, we can, in a way we can be picky, but in a way we can't. <laughs> Um, also, uh, there was one other, somebody found fate and I didn't see this come. I, I, I didn't see fate coming. Oh, terrifying. And, uh, it wasn't that exciting to me anyway. I mean, look at this chart in the daily and that's just not enough of a gap that someone made money in fate, I believe. But, um, essentially the only thing I liked was the cues as it unfolded. Yeah, I, I don't like to mess with fate. It messes with me. Um, <laughs> that'll pass it back to you. All right, that was good. Uh, good read on the market, excellent. I believe the market makes new highs in the queues again soon. Could even be this week. And um, yeah, I mean, everything looks great. So good read on that. So Target pushed back a little bit, but again, the stop is wide. And I think it's best for these late trades, if you don't get the perfect entry, to put the stop wide. Um, Target should continue all day. I believe Target closes red today. Target looks lower now. Um, I don't know where exactly in the next few weeks, and I don't think I'm going to call an option on this. Uh, I just don't have 100% conviction it's going to have anything that would make it playable as an option. But today, it's definitely going dropped fell should hold the weakness today and i had a feeling that this was going to do something here i just really didn't have time to look at anything this morning um so that was good i thought there was a couple other big names out though maybe there wasn't because i didn't really recognize any of the things you had up um but overall i'm glad you guys did something let's look at tomorrow let me just look at or tonight i mean does anyone have any questions about anything Gyro did today? Looks like he did a good job. Target also did a great job calling that in like a blink of an eye. You could still be in it. But I think you get a little bit of a move in something like that late. I think scalping it is the name of the game. And um, I'm not sure what I would have done here out of the gate. I really don't know. I have, I have absolutely no idea. But in order to get Target with the way that it switched around and flipped late, you would have had to watch it watch nothing else in the open and then almost do it on the fly. I'm not sure what I would have done. Qcom. Does anyone have any questions about anything so far? So yesterday was nothing which was good. That was a good decision. Called Amazon option. Some of you did it. You're up. Um, that should be a big trade too. A 
Well, let's look at what's out for tonight. Oh, CN. I knew there was something else. CN and cars. What did they do? I knew there were some other ones we saw yesterday. CN and cars. HRB is tonight. We'll watch it. I have no idea what it does. And urban. There we go. Here's the late ones. Tonight's watchers. Urban and HRB. Whoa, CN was crazy. I don't think I would have done this. No, I don't think I would have done this, but it worked really good. And what was the other one I just said? Cars. That's really working because the market. Ooh, look at that. That didn't do anything right. All right, so if you're in the queue, is anybody still in the queues or you just got out of it? It hit the first target, 169. I do think the market is strong overall here, though, in the next few days. Target looks fine. Stop is very far away. Or you could have get out where I said. What's everybody doing right now? Who's in what? Who's in what for trades and things to do? Everyone's quiet as mouses. Koala bear's flat. Okay. Anyone else? Galahad's still in target. And Green Maverick's still in the queues. All right. So I think we could get something good tomorrow. Just because there's Urban tonight, HRB tonight. Let's look at those charts right now and see where they're at today. Um... I really think that, like Gyro said, I mean, being picky is important, but don't stress yourself out about it. If there's nothing good, that you don't do anything at all. So it's just it's low stress. You can't make something there that isn't there. It's either there or it's not there. Uh, it was very clear today, though, that the market it was going to hold and is higher. Um, and HRB is definitely going to be a watch. Let's look at our room. Dubois got out of Target, yeah. Galahad, I thought you were following me. If you're following me, I'm not sure why you're still in Target. Urban doesn't even look like it's moving, but it is. All right, so I don't think anyone is still left in Netflix. All right, is anyone still, is actually a Zen Trader here? She might be the only one. I'll have to find out today if she's still in this. Is anyone at all still in Netflix? Because the bottom line is that this, I knew this would be a huge trade. Does anyone listen to anything I say? Because I'm just wondering that. Because I actually said that. I actually said it, and I said it in the room, and I said it. I said, this is going to be a huge trade. I said, this is going to be the biggest one. That's exactly what I said. I said it, and no one listens to me. Or if you do, it just goes in one ear and it flies out the other. And in Galahad's case, it definitely flies out. In fact, I don't even think it goes in one ear. I said this was going to be the biggest one. I was right, and I said it. And it went down before it went up, and it was the biggest one. And it's not even done. And if you did it out till next week, at the end of next week, of the market rally, this will even go over 325. And this will be the biggest one. Qcom look like it went. Yesterday or today? Uh, this was weird yesterday. Glad we didn't do it. Today it followed through a gap down. Yes, you could have done QCOM too. I don't know how this would have rated, and I doubt I would have done it, but Target would have been a watch or nothing, probably. Now you remember me saying a Galahad, but you didn't do the trade. At least you did this one. Um... I forget what I was going to say now. I was going to say something else. Koala Bear, you do listen to me, but you're not on the options list. So I was specifically saying, uh, you know, making comments. And actually, I am going to bring up one point because CMG is an option trade that's still on um, since we're done day trading today. This, I said, the day that this gapped up, you could kill the trade. You could have killed it here and come away with money. It would have been a loss, but it wouldn't have been as much of a loss as it is now. Now, the trade's still on and still could go on and work. It was called out till June. Galahad did not do Netflix, and he didn't do some other trades because he's in this and he's down. 
This is a perfect example of something that actually one of the guys in the webinar last night mentioned. Don't risk too much in your trades that one trade hurts your ability to be able to take other calls because I am making calls every day and every week and all kinds of things, whether they're options, trades, or day trades. And if one trade you're down in, and I still think this works, but if one trade that you're down in prevents your ability to be able to trade and you freeze like a jackrabbit in the woods, then you are risking too much money in your trades. And that is a problem. And I know everybody wants to make a million dollars. But not all gaps are created equal. And that's why every once in a while I say, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a really good one. This is going to be a big one. What were, this, what were the ones I said that? Sometimes I say that about day, day trades. Sometimes I don't have time. Sometimes I say that, though, about the options trades, but not all the time. But when I do, you should listen up to what I say. What ones did I say that about? Spy, Q's, Netflix, Walmart, put, I said it. And I was right on every one. I do not say that every trade. Not all gaps are created equal. Not even the ones that we trade. Not even the ones that we trade. Not even the ones that we play. They're not all created equal. And Galahad, you and your mind are doing other things, which is not what I taught you, which is why you are not doing as well as you should be doing. Nowhere near. And you are using other strategies and systems. And when you said that last night in, in the webinar, I thought to myself, I'm not sure if my system is compatible with any other system. In fact, it's probably not because many of the things that I taught you are the opposite of what other systems teach you. And if you wanted to go long Netflix on this day, that is nothing that I taught you. In fact, the complete opposite. It could have broken this support, fell, dropped, broke, and you could have been down even more. And what you're doing is adding to trades or are you're taking new trades when they do things like this and that's wrong. I didn't teach you to do it. I did not teach you how to do that. And since you're so stuck on this and down in it and held on to it for dear life and now has prevented you from taking other amazing calls that I called, my bet is you added to this trade. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but I have a feeling knowing you that when that gapped up and the price became cheaper, you added to the trade, which you shouldn't have done. And why shouldn't you have done it? Because it gapped up. Just like when Netflix gapped down, you shouldn't have taken a new trade there. The trade was the day that I called it. You're either in it and kill it at 50% loss, you hold it through. But the problem is you're doing a different thing in every trade you take. I guarantee you, Amazon, I don't know what this does yet. I don't even know what it does. I just knew it was a good call. I knew it was going to work. I'm not saying this is going to be amazing. I'm not saying this is going to be the biggest one in the world. I'm not saying that at all. I don't know yet. But I, I saw it's going to work, and it is working. But I'm telling you, whatever the right thing to do in this is, you'll do the opposite because your head is not on right about money. You are probably risking too much in your trades. You are risking too much in your trades. You should never not take another trade that I call today, tomorrow, this afternoon, next week because of one losing trade or even one losing day. And last week when we had the losing day, I picked myself up right and pulled my bootstraps up and I've called great trades, winning trades every day since. Big whoop. One losing day in a month. One losing trade should never prevent you from continuing to do what you do. And if it would, can you see how that ruins your whole life? I mean, how could I ever do anything at all if that's how I acted? You, you, can't, you can't risk more than you can afford to lose in one trade. And you cannot allow things that happen when a trade loses affect your ability to move forward. And you do, and that's why you're not doing well. And I can't fix that problem for you. And some of you are, are, are probably having a similar problem and don't want to tell me. But that's fine. You don't tell me then. But I'm telling you right now, you can't allow bad things that happen to you to ruin your life. You just can't. And this is a general, just a, in general. But in trading, it's so obvious that it affects people in such a negative, negative, negative way. And that's why you can't risk more in a trade that you're willing to lose. Because if one bad trade ruins your life, then chances are you risk too much. Too much than you should have. And then when the one works and goes on to be a 200, 300%, in fact, let's just leave and look and see what this is worth right now. I, I'm just, is this, I mean, I'm just going to look up and see what it's worth right now. This Netflix. This was a 300% return on investment. I know it, at least today. And Barry didn't want to do it, but Barry has different issues than you, Galahad. You know, I, you, you just, you, you're risking too much if you, if you don't want to do the trade. And you're stuck in something else. Let's see what this is worth right now. Yeah, this was, I knew this was going to be a biggie. Oh, what was I going to say? I forget. 
This prevented you from, I'm, then, then why didn't you do this trade? Here it goes, it's going to 325. Why didn't you do this trade? If the fact that CMG is down, why didn't you do Netflix? That I wouldn't answer, because I asked you in the webinar last night, tell me why you didn't do this trade. And you can't tell me risk to reward because that's baloney schmoney now. That's crap. That's not true, actually. The stock's at $22 through the strike. And it has more than a week to go. So risk to reward, eh. What's the reason you didn't do the trade? And by the way, you said last night, oh, Melissa, I'm following you, I'm following you, I'm following you. You're not following me because I got out of this today in the blink of an eye. And, and you didn't. Now, it still looks lower, but what if it wasn't? What if it's not? It still looks fine and it looks good and it looks lower, but you shouldn't be taking any chances. Every time you're green, you should get out. Every time you're green, you should get out. Every time you're up, you should get out. You should be listening to everything I say and just following me like a robot. Da, 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 robot, robot, robot. For those of you that are doing very well, make your own decisions, do your own thing, listen to yourself, listen to your gut. For those of you that are not doing well, you have no excuses not to be listening to me. No excuses at all, because you should all be up and listen to me like a robot, 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 robot. And Galahad, you should turn your brain off and be robotic. Mr. Roboto, play that song, because that's what you should be, and then you'd make money. And then you can go back to thinking, because your thinking, cat, is turned upside down. Yeah, there you go, monkey. I forgot it, monkey. And if you get out of this, you can do this again. Actually, if you want to short this here, you could lower the stop and pull it down. You can short this again, put the stop at 7280. You could redo this a second trade if you want, if you want to trade all day, which I don't and I can't. Or you could stay with it and pull the stop down to 7280. But I would not do any options in this, people, because I'm not saying it's lower in the overall bigger picture. Listen, I'm giving you a good advice because I'm trying to help you. It's it's really just it's 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 very frustrating that that I've got brand new people who just did the class that are doing amazing. Then I have someone like you, Galahad, that just can't get his head on right and doesn't listen to anything I say. You say that you listen to what I say, but you don't. And how do I know you don't? Because you didn't do Netflix. You're still in CMG, and you probably should have killed it because it's bothering you so much that it's down. And my guess is that you added to the trade. Are you going to cop to it? Because Are you going to tell the truth? Because I bet that you took more of the trade when it rallied. You did, didn't you? Don't risk more than you're willing to lose. This idea of buying cheap on the, buying here. What's, how can I phrase this? And then I'm going to let everybody go. Um, the bargain hunting. We did talk about this. We talked about this the other week. Stop hunting for bargains. Looking for big wins. Stop, stop trying to find the bargains. Looking for big wins. I'd rather, I just talked today about IPOs. If you want some huge, huge windfall that's a bargain, then buy into an IPO, but also be prepared to lose every dime of the money. Or go gambling. It's, this is, this was to buy more of this when that gapped up, to buy more of the put. It's, it was a put option. You know, when it gapped up, it was the wrong thing to do because it really shouldn't have done that. The chart's still lower, but now it's harder to, de to determine the time frame. Until it gets back going down around again, which it hasn't, it has not yet, you don't know if it's going to make the move or when it's going to make the move exactly the timing. See, part of this is timing. It's timing, timing, timing. And that's why Netflix taking the trade here, you wouldn't have known the timing of it. Take this away in the morning. That's how the stock looked and it was here. You could never have predicted in 100 million years the stock would do what it did on the Friday. The stock could have dropped down to 270, and then he would have added to the position, and he would have been down even more. And then it would have been just like CMG, where you're waiting to see where it's going to go and when. Then it would have been at 270, 30 points away from the strike with two weeks left to go. And that's not what happened. But the point was, you don't do the opposite of what I've taught you to do. And that's what you're doing, because you're trying desperately to take huge positions in trades to get them the cheapest that you can to get a bargain price, and then have it go like crazy birds. That happens once in a blue moon by fate, just by happenstance. That is not the normal way you should be trading. That is not the what I taught you to do at all. Sometimes it just happens. It just it just happens by dumb luck sometimes. Just by dumb luck sometimes you happen to be in something that you paid cheap for and it goes crazy. 
and you make a crap load of money once a year, twice a year. That does not happen all the time. It doesn't happen on any regular basis. You use the strategy, you implement it, you risk what you can afford to use, the trade goes, you make a normal amount of money or a little bit more than you expected if you're still in Netflix or if you held the Walmart or if you held the SPY the day that it rallied, which some of you did and some of you didn't. Some of you got out of it the Friday before, which was still okay because it was money. Some of you got out of it here, which was fine, and some people held it through Monday, which was the big trade. But either way, on a consistent basis, you should not be constantly, constantly, constantly risking more than you can afford to lose, adding to trades that, that actually you can't tell now what they're going to do. Is CMG lower? Yes. Can I actually say what I would make a brand new call in this today to take it of that strike in June? I would not make that call today. Now, if you're in the call, it's on. It's either on or you're killed it. So, you know, this, it's, that's not a new trade here. You just, if you're in it, you're in it. You killed it when it's down 50% or the day that it gapped up or you're holding it to, because you believe it, but you certainly don't add to the trade. And you certainly don't allow this to affect every trade decision you take for the rest of your life. This is gonna be a huge trade. Here, let me text Zen Trader and see, cause she never watches our trades and see if she's looking at it. Bargain hunting may be probably okay, good investment strategy, but for a specialty day trade, not likely. I don't think bargain hunting is good for investment strategy. We did talk about this. Oh, there's Zen Trader. I just texted you. What are you doing? Are you in this Netflix or are you out of it, Zen Trader? Um, if you're in it, how much are you up? How much are you up and you gotta watch the trade? So this could go to 325 today. I don't know for sure, but it looks like it's headed there. Or you could get out of it today. Or you're waiting for the market to rally another day or two. What do you wanna do and how much money are you up? See, these are the good problems to have. Zen, you're up 18, 1,866 bucks and you risk $650 in the trade, which you said yesterday. So that's a really good trade. It's 300% turnaround. So what do you wanna do, Zen Trader? You think Warren Buffett is a value bargain hunter? Warren Buffett is a billionaire. Warren Buffett can do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> so to d say, well, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be a trade like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett can buy Netflix, withstand a downturn all the way down to two bucks a share, buy more at two bucks a share, and then move the stock back up to three hundred twenty-three dollars where it is today, and do it whenever he feels like it, and take a nap, and do whatever. The, you, you cannot expect to become a billionaire trading like Warren Buffett. That is not the way to go. That just is not. He First of all, he started investing and made all of his money a very, 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 very long time ago. The market is very different now. Very different now. He can eat cheeseburgers daily and stay healthy? Maybe. Okay, what are you doing for this here Zen Trader? You bought Amazon too and you're up 130 bucks. We'll just ride that out. But what are you doing about this one? Three day rally, pushing up. Here's the momentum. Are you gonna take it out at 325? Are you gonna hold it? When you're up over $2,000, it's getting there. Are you gonna take it out? Are you gonna hold it to be up a little bit more? Does it really even matter to you? If you get out of this today and you're up over two grand, will you be happy? If it goes a little bit more, you could have made three. We'd be pissed if you if you got out of it at two, because that's how Gal that's what Galahad would do. What do you want to do? If you get a, if you're up two thousand dollars in this today, will you be happy? Here, you're 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 gonna be up two thousand. You're, no, you're up two thousand now. What are you gonna do with this trade? Zen Trader is another person that just listens to everything that I say. And by the way, she's highly intelligent and very smart. So smart people who have brains and thinks for themselves still listen to everything I say because they know that I'm good at what I do. Here it is. It's at 325. Holy crap. Look at that. <laughs> Yay, Netflix. Go, go, go. Gypsy, are you here? Is Gypsy here? Did she sign out today? Gypsy, Gypsy, Gypsy must have signed out. She was another one. I wondered if she held this one too. 
you're staying in it because if you if you're not staying in it the exit's right here it the, this is an exit right here at 10 30 reversal time hit up for 325 this is a good exit here today if you want to get out of it if you want to hold it fine 330 is the next number 329 330 and that isn't even something that's crazy and this turned out to be the biggest trade and i said it so there you go and i can't say anything about this except for it's going to get to the strike would I please share my precise definition of risk in this application? It's it's the the risk is dollars and cents. What do you mean? And here, first of all, this is going still, and I called a second trade in if you wanted it. The risk is the amount of money you're risking. For example, I'm just making this easy here to just talk it through. If you did this 50 by 80, the second call in here, target was 30 cents. So 30 cents, if you take 1,000 shares, it's 300 bucks. If you shorted this at 71.50, target 71, how much money would you make? Go, $500. Is that a good trade? The answer is yes. That's a good trade. What if it just got down to the low of the day? What if it just got down to that number here, 75 or whatever it was, close enough? What if you shorted it and got down to, um, no, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, actually, I'm talking about the second trade. So I called this in here. Say you had shorted it 70, well, let's just not be exact. Say you did 72, uh, 72 by 70, 72 by 80. Say you did 80 cents. Say you did 72 by 80, just to make it easy. And you took 1,000 shares, it's 800 bucks. So you shorted it at 72. So say it drops down and it goes to 75. You made 25 cents. 25 cents, which means you made $250, you risk 800. Is that the greatest trade in the world? No, no it's not. But it also is 1031, it was a very late trade, it was a scalp. You still could have done it, you still could do it. But I didn't do it because it was very, very late. But in the morning, you would have get a much bigger trade in this, except for the fact that I wasn't here. But it, the point is though, that in the morning, you get bigger moves that have better follow through for the risk to reward. So that wasn't great, but for a scalp, it's okay. To me, it's too late. Say we had done this today, which we didn't. Say I had done it in here, for example. Say we did 73.50, I would have put the stop probably at 85. So say 20, 35 cents. 35 cents, first target would have been 73, which it did get to. So you went to make 50 cents, risking, risking 35 cents. Is that a good trade? The answer is yes. Where did it go almost immediately to the target and through it, 72.66. If you did this here, you made almost a dollar. If you got out in this bar, is that a good trade? The answer is yes. Your risk was 35 cents. You made almost three times it. That's a good trade. So the risk is a dollar and cents. You determine your share position by that. In reference to the options, we talked about this because two people in here thought that this trade was too expensive. And now you see that that was absolutely baloney schmoney. Barry didn't do it and he had time to do it and he talked about it for two days in here and didn't do it and pr didn't press the button and he would have made more than $1,000. So he could have risked $700 and made two grand just like Zen Trader. She only did one contract. She spent 650 bucks. And Zen Trader, should be, you should be risking way more than you are. I don't know what's going on with you that you don't want to do it, but Zen Trader is a good example where she could risk more. She's doing the opposite. She's, she's, she's doing the opposite of you, Galahad, but she's finding success so she can continue to do that. But she definitely, definitely, definitely could be risking more money in her trades She's not doing it yet, but she's doing the opposite of you. So she's risking less than she can afford to risk, like like almost nothing what she can afford. But she, And she's doing so well because she's very relaxed about the trade. She's like, la, 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 I'll take the dogs for a walk and maybe I'll look at a chart and maybe I'll call Melissa. And then all of a sudden she's up $2,000. So, I mean, when you're sitting there and you can't get off your computer and you have a heart attack and you can't sleep at night, then chances are you risk too much in the trade. Although Zen Trader, definitely, I don't know why you're not risking more now, but if you don't want to, fine, but you could. You don't want to have to monitor the trades every second. Well, there you go. Um, not reflecting the leverage or stops? No, you are looking at the stops, Tango Bravo. What do you mean? You, you have stops. Yes, you have stops. You have to look at the difference between the entry and the stop. You're confusing me here now. What I'm I'm concerned. I'm concerned you don't understand what we're doing here now. 
If you short this trade here, and I'm just making the numbers easy, 73.50 with a stop at 73.80. If you had done that, your risk is 30 cents. The stop is 73.80. If the stop would have gone over and hit you, you would have lost money. You would have lost 30 cents. If you would take 100 shares, it would have been 30 bucks. If you had taken 1,000 shares, it would have been 300 bucks. The stop counts. You lost me. I'm concerned now. I'm concerned because if you're trading here, then you do need to understand this. And you did the class, but I know it's all new to you. But I'm concerned you don't know what I'm talking about here. Koala Bear still talking about Warren Buffett. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is that, you know, it's great to admire someone, admire the man for everything he's accomplished in his life, but to pattern yourself after that and say, I want to be that kind of trader is really not realistic. It's a different time, a different place, a different world, a different market, not realistic. You don't have the capital. It's just not even something that I would even suggest to do. Admire someone for their wonderful, amazing accomplishments. But if you want to be an active day trader, I, I, I you know, look, bargain hunting for things is not going to make you rich. And I'm not saying you have to get rich doing this. I'm saying you just want to make money, whatever the amount of money is. And I think flipping it over quickly, if you make a half amount, like, you know, today I had a few minutes in here, very, very late is good. If you flip it over one, that's what our goal is every day. Sometimes we do it, sometimes we do more than that. Um, the goal is not to lose, quite frankly. The goal is to win. And so I've been able to accomplish that, and I do it very well. So. When you miss opportunities and you cherry pick the trains, chances are you're going to do CMG, which you're going to be down in, and you won't do then five other good ones I called at work. <clears throat> so, you know. There we go. Frisco knows Buffett. He's his best friend, I guess. Buffett is a year trader, not a day trader. There you go. Good day. You have 2109 in Netflix. Here's another option for you. I'm just throwing it out there. You could take Netflix off the table, book the money, and throw it into Amazon. Throw, throw, throw your profit into Amazon. I'm just throwing it out there for you, Zen Trader. You could do that. Ride this puppy up today or get out of it here and then and then call call this trade done and throw the money into Amazon. Throw, throw what you got back into this puppy here too whenever this pops and you'll be in this for a big move up. So there's a secondary idea. Or hold them both. All right, listen, have a good day, everyone. I will see you tomorrow morning. I don't know what we do and I don't know what we get. And Galahad, this did not go back down and break the low and it's at 72.69 and you didn't, you didn't listen to me. You keep saying every day you listen to me, but I know that's a lie. So you can keep telling yourself that you listen to me. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. All right. We'll talk more about bargains later. We did talk about it, though. We talked about it about dresses. I know that we did. We talked about it about clothing, and it was a good talk. And we'll talk about it more later. I know that we did. We can talk about it more, but I've got to get going here. It's late. All right. I'll talk to you later.